for one man uh, in Lincolnshire today was um, very special. In fact, he, he didn't realise how special it was going to be. Ron Jennings is a, a former warrant officer and radio operator on board the Lancaster. And uh, just by chance, he decided today uh, he'd visit the Battle of Britain memorial site and uh, visit, uh, visit the uh, visitor's centre. Uh, and, of course, as soon as he came in, uh, he, he was the, the guest star. Uh, he has been talking to Judy Theobald. I used to serve with uh, 619 Squadron, which was based in Dunholm Lodge, not too far from here, uh, and uh, we, did, we did 32 ops, actually, in the Lancasters, and half of them were from Dunholm Lodge, and, and the other from uh, Strubby. So, so that really is, is, is the story there. What was your role on the Lancasters? I, I was a radio operator, sat just just on the wing, in actual fact, on the, on the left-hand side. What do you make a face? <laughs> well, I've, I've seen inside a Lancaster, and I've seen, really? I've seen where the radio operator, radio operator sat. And actually, I mean, it's not comfortable, is it? It's a very cramped well, space. Well, the point where, I mean, the, 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 the Lancaster was not meant to be comfortable, of course. It was just meant to do a, do a job, you know. It, it was not like a 747, you know, with, with plush armchairs, that's for sure. From where you were sitting, could you actually see out? I could indeed, yes, yes. Uh, I, I had a window uh, next to me, in actual fact, where I could see a, a, everything. I could see the, the, the searchlights and, and the anti-aircraft fire, and if there were any um, night fighters around, of course, you, you, you probably could call a glimpse of them occasionally, and you could also see the target, which invariably was, was uh, ablaze. <laughs> That's the right word, yeah. What did it feel like when you took off? Well, we were all 22, and to be absolutely honest, you had this feeling of excitement. The adrenaline was, was going, and you had this feeling of, 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 uh, of excitement. I wouldn't class it as fear, to be quite honest, because then, you know, if, if you were afraid, then, then you wouldn't do the job, obviously. And we, we were all volunteers. I mean, cr crew members were, were, were all volunteers, you see. So you knew exactly what, what you were heading into, but my crew... We were very, very lucky indeed, extremely lucky. We had a good pilot. I mean, the, the odds, actually, of returning from a flight were 50-50, as, as you obviously must know. You, you really didn't think about these things. It, 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 it was something that had to be done, and, 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 and you just did it. Oh, yeah. This is a poem, my first op from RAF Dunham Lodge, 619 Squadron, as seen through the eyes of warrant officer Ron Jennings. One by one, each mighty Merlin burst into life. It was 1944. Our losses were high, a time of great strife. The noise was shattering the silence of the night. This was our very first op, so there was no time for fright. Our last letters home had been written with care, then placed in our lockers for our loved ones to share. Whilst each word we had written was truly meant, we all fervently hoped they would never be sent. As we waited for takeoff, I looked into space. All I had learnt then fell into his place. Now we were airborne and struggled to gain height. Check the equipment again. It would be a long flight. Our target divorce would be shortly in sight, waiting to bear the RAF's might. The Pathfinders boys had done their job well. The buildings they had identified would soon be a shell. Our bomb doors were open. The bomb aimer took care. It depended on him now to hit the red flare. At 7,000 feet, we began our bomb run. This was for real. Our practice was done. The searchlights were weaving as though doing a dance. If we were caught up in those, you stood little chance. Night fighters were prowling like birds of prey. Take your photographs, Bill, and let us be on our way. Now Dunholm Lodge lay beneath us with a welcoming arm. Our first op was completed. We had come to no harm. After debriefing and all had been said, my only thought was to get into bed. 
Friendships were made, then quickly lost. We were all volunteers. This was the cost. No time for reflection, no time for a tear. Our cloak of, bra of bravado hit many a fear. A memorial now stands close to where the control tower once stood, built by Brian and Margaret as only they could. Each year a remembrance service is held there to remember the airmen who are now in God's care. When the time at last arrives for my final flight, I shall wing my way to heaven at the speed of light. There to greet me with will be comrades of mine from Dunholm Lodge and 619. That's beautiful. All right. Thank you very well, much.